All right, part two of the knowledge of God. This week, I want to focus on how to know the knowledge of God. Last week, I want to quick, do a quick summary to bless your life for those who are not here. Last week, we, we talked about three categories of people that are in Christianity. But can we put that verse up? Daniel chapter 11. Verse 32. Just the B part. Just the B part. It says, but. Come on, I want you to repeat it to me, with me as well. Say, but. The people who know their God shall be and carry out great acts. Now, there is two important keys here. Only the people who know their God, they shall be strong and they will do great exploit. And now the opposite is true. If you do not know your God, you will be weak and you cannot do great exploit. And we have discovered last week that there are three categories of Christians. Number one, we talked about the ignorant, Christ, sorry, the, the, um, the disobedient Christian. The disobedient Christian is a Christian who lacks the knowledge of God. They know the word, but they refuse to obey the word. Meaning there is knowledge, but they don't want to seek after knowledge. It's everything provided for them. Church is there. The Bible is there. Prayer is there. Online, everything is available. But they are so disobedient that they don't want to obey. And these people suffer a lot. They suffer a lot. Number two, we talked about the, um, the ignorant Christian. And we've discovered the ignorant Christian are those who are so ignorant. They know the truth, but they manipulate the truth, and they are not, uh, they, they basically reject it. They don't want the knowledge of the truth. They're so ignorant. These are people that are basically not putting the effort in knowing God. They're the ignorant truth. They just, ah, it's okay, it's not my issue. It's okay, I am saved, it's all right. I don't need to know more about God. You know, I, I come to church, I don't need to know anything else. You know, they, you know, they're ignorant. They don't want to know a lot of things about God. And then number three, we talked about the lazy Christian. The lazy Christians, they, the truth is there, but they refuse to, to comply to the truth, meaning they're not engaging the truth or seeking the knowledge of the truth. They are shaken when, when challenges come in their life. Their foundation is weak, and they walk opposite. They're meant to walk in the light, but they walk in darkness as a result of it. This was the three types of people. Uh, and if you want to know, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, we talked about that last week. And Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13, we talked about that. And then the last verse, we talked about that also, I believe, in the book of Habakkuk or something like that. But today, I want to focus on now, how can we know the knowledge of God? Because we know we can be ignorant. We know we can be disobedient. We know we can be lazy. And as a result... There's so much consequences of not knowing God. But we want to know God. How come will you believe in God and you don't want to know God? You know what I mean? Many of us believe in God, but we don't want to know much about Him. We don't want to discover many things about Him. So, if you know God, you'll become strong and you can do exploit. But if you do not know God, you cannot. Now, Knowing God is essential to our Christian work. However, you cannot obtain the knowledge of God without effort and discipline while depending on the Holy Spirit. So you cannot know God without your effort, without your discipline, and without depending on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that guides us to know God. But when we don't depend on the Holy Spirit, while searching the Scripture, while looking for the knowledge of God, it will become just a head knowledge. You see, many Christians read their Bible. They memorize Scriptures. 
They go to church. They even copy the pastor's preaching, the way the pastor talk. They memorize everything, how the pastor talk about God, the names of God. They memorize it very well. But if you ask them anything or you look at their life, their life does not reflect what they are confessing and talking about. They say, I know God. And then next minute, there's really nothing that shows they know God. So the goal of knowing God is not head knowledge. The goal of knowing God is not to show that how spiritual I am. Because that's our biggest fault. That we want to know God so we can show people I'm spiritual as well. No, knowing God is not about being spiritual. Many people are spiritual, but they're going, they're not enjoying the life of God because they do not know the knowledge of God. Many people, especially Christian, the Pentecostal type of Christian, we are so spiritual. We love the things of church, but when it comes to understanding God and how we can apply what we know about God in our daily life, we are zero. There's nothing like that. Nothing shows that we know God. And I've discovered, and this is what I'm going to share today, how to know God, some practical tips, but the key word is effort. Key word is discipline. Key word is depending on the Holy Spirit. You know, Pharisees knew the Bible very well. Meaning there's like leaders and pastors, some people who said they've been in church for a very long time. They know the Bible very well. But when Jesus began to say some things, they begin to say, no, 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 <laughs> there's something wrong about what you're saying, Jesus. Because when you, be, you, when you live in church for a very long time, you become a Pharisee. When you go to church all the time, sometimes you become a Pharisee. The reason why is be, you become so casual with church. Oh, this is how they do it. This is how the pastor preaches. This is how he introduces. This is how he put things. And this is how we read the scripture. And then we, we begin to analyze the Bible like Pharisee. And we begin to analyze the Bible like intelligent people. You know, one of the things that someone told me before, that if you want to, uh, you want to hide the truth of God, give it to people in the village. But if you bring it to the first world country, they will manipulate the real truth because they want to rationalize everything. So if you give it to the village, they will use it very well. But you bring it to the Rationalize people to the Western world, everything has to be A plus Z has to equal Z. They want it to, they, 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 they read the Bible like it's math. <laughs> they read the Bible like it's their biology book. They read it like that. And many Christians read the Bible like it's biology book. They read it like it's their math book, mathematics volume one or two. They read it like that. But when you read the Bible in that mindset, I'm telling you, you will struggle. You will know about God, but you do not know God. Many people know about God, but they do not know God. The Pharisees, the people of Israel, they know about God because the prophets were talking to them about God all the time. But when Jesus came, I am God. Ah, come on, you, how can you be God? You, 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 you white man like me, and how can you be God? You eat like us. You are carpenter's son. We know your mother. We know your brother. How can you be God? We know you, where you grew from. We know your cousin John the Baptist. How can you be God? We know Elizabeth. We know all of them. We know them. How can you be God? You see, sometimes we become too casual in knowing God. But the people who know their God, they shall be strong and do great exploit. Now, how do we know God? So I want to share you some tips, some advice. How to know God. And doing this, remember, everything that you do in knowing God, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to be involved. When the Holy Spirit is not involved in knowing God, you will encounter things that you don't want to encounter. You will think it is God, but it's not God. You will have misinterpretation about God, but you think it's God. So if the Holy Spirit is not involved in knowing God, then our pursuit for knowledge will be very bad. That's why you see in Africa, people 
will, will, will lie on the floor and a prophet will step on them. They think that's God working. There's, there's people who will take snake and then let the snake bite you and then you'll be healed. People think they know God. There's people say that, that you'd have to take your aunties in, in the church, the pastor to, to bless it, and then you will know, not knowing God. Can you see that? How, how manipulated they know God. I've watched a video and that was disgusting. The, you know what? The pastor say, everybody in this church, we drink alcohol. So they bring beer, put beer all on the side. And every member gets two bottles. Every member gets two bottles. My God. Now, which Bible are they reading? <laughs> which Bible are they reading? You know, it's strange. In fact, some of them, they brought the bath there. Two pastors, and then the ladies line up. They will shower the lady in the presence of everybody. Now, they know God. See, if we do not know God, these are the things we become slaves to. We'll be misled by pastors. We'll be misled by prophets and apostles, you name it, because we do not know God. Remember my story last time, I went to a church and they called me a witch. Everybody in the church, you are a, that you are a witch. Come forward right now. So everybody in the church, you are a witch automatically. And you have to come down and repent before God. Now, what kind of knowledge do they know about God? You guys understand where I'm coming from? We need to know God. Because if we do not know God, I know a few churches right now that I've talked to, they have caused havoc in people. Because the pastor thinks he knows God. The young people think they know God. And this is my warning to every young person. If you think you are preach, you, you want to beca because you have the call of God, and all of a sudden you want to preach, I'm telling you, know God first before you start preaching. Because if you do not know God, the message you're talking about will be the message that is coming against you. Every person, whatever you preach about, is what you'll be tested about. You'll be tested about. When I figured this out, I said, ha, I have to be careful what I teach because... Satan is after me. If I teach about money, he's going to attack my money issue. If I talk about uh, being holy, he's going to attack that area. He's going to bring temptation, women's everywhere corner to just tempt me. Because he wants to find out, do you really know God? So your message will be tested of the knowledge of the God you know. So you need to know God. That's why when Moses was in the burning bush, before he can get set the people of, of God for free, he had to be sent in the bush to know God first. Because you cannot go before Pharaoh empty-handed. Many of us are trying to preach, but we do not know the enemy that is in front of us. We do not know the God that we have. You need to know the God you have before you begin to say any message to anybody in the world. Because if you do not know, you will struggle in life. And I'm telling you this as being a pastor studying this ministry. If I did not know God, I would have left ministry the first day and announced that I was going to be a preacher. The first day I even said I was going to open a church, I would have left church straight away if I didn't know God. Many people think they know God. When the testing of time comes, like Job, your wife come against you, your children die, people, but he said, I know my God. So I want to show you how to. I'm a very practical preacher. So let's begin. I said it last week in our teaser. There's four ways of knowing God. Hopefully I'll dwell so much on two. And I'll share the other one just lightly. Four ways of knowing God. Number one, let me name, and then I'll begin to. Number one is the word of God. How you know God is by the word of God. Number two, how you know God by the names of God. Number three, how you know God by the person of Jesus Christ. Number four, how you know God by experience. These are the four ways that you will know God. But there is a practical element to all of them. If I tell you just the word of God, that's just another thing. But what does that mean really? What does that mean really? So let's begin to dig number one, the word of God. Effort 
discipline depending on the Holy Spirit. So the Word of God means if I want to know who God is, I need to look to the Bible. The Bible reveals who really God is. The Bible is a, 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 a story or a information or a message about the person of God. So every time I hold my Bible, I am holding the knowledge, the revelation, the wisdom of God, who God is. But how do I know? I need, number one, practically, I need to read. They say the only way, if you want to hide truth from African, hide it in a book. Because we don't like reading. Many of us don't like reading. We like watching instead. Oh, somebody told me. We like stories, but we don't like reading. So the way you will know God is to read your Bible. What does that mean? How do I read? I spend at least a couple of minutes, a couple of hours to read the Bible. You read one or two chapters per day and you will know something about God. But if you are not putting the effort in reading one or two chapters a day to read, uh, to know about God, you will not have the knowledge of God. There have to be this reading. It begins with reading. Number two, in the same, the Word of God. After you read, you need to study. Imagine going to exam and you have not studied in that exam. Do you think you will pass? Would you know about that? And this is the problem. We don't study the Bible. We read. It's good to read. But beyond reading, there has to be a studying. Begin to pound upon it. Begin to think about it. Is, is this true? You know, when you study, you ask questions, don't you? So when we read the Bible, we need to ask questions. Is God talking in here? Who is talking? Is it the devil talking? Is it Jesus? Because the Word of God is not all about the Word of God talking. This Bible that you have, the devil is speaking to. So we can say the Word of God has the, the Word of the devil. The Word of men are in the Bible. But you need to know the word of God in the Bible. Because the word of God in the Bible reveal who God is. Not what Satan has said or done, but the word of God. So you need to study. Ask question. My brother Abraham was so good with his study when he was doing his the degree. And you will see he will have planned out. At this time he's studying this. At this time I said, this guy got it. He got it. That's how you study. So the same thing, if you apply that, if he apply that in his spiritual journey, he will also know more about God. We need to do the same, study. And then also, the third thing in the Word of God, you need to memorize what you read. There has to be a memory. You need to memorize it. Memorize what you're reading. Memorize the stories in the Bible because they reveal something about God. This memory, all of us have big brains, so let's use that big brain to memorize. Don't put that excuse, I can't remember things. Oh, when there's a problem in your life, you will remember certain things. How come when now it's about God, you don't want to remember anything? When that boyfriend leaves you, you will remember how he started and what he said. How come you can't remember what God has said too when you read the Bible? Can you see where I'm coming from here now? We can remember. There's memory. We have the capacity to remember the scriptures. You need to do that. Be disciplined. Be strategic about it. Go to your prayer room and say, this 15 minutes is about reading. This another 15 minutes is about studying. This another 15 minutes is about memorizing. And you have spent 45 minutes already in knowing something about God. And then ask the Holy Spirit. Help me to memorize it because some of us can't remember a lot of things. Help me to memorize Holy Spirit. Help me to study Holy Spirit. Help me to read Holy Spirit. You are asking questions. You are engaging the Holy Spirit. And it will help you. Number two again in the same, number three sorry, in the same of knowing the word of God. There has to be a constant meditation. Meditation. I'm sure all of us meditate. Do you worry? We, who doesn't worry? Only God doesn't worry. <laughs> All of us worry sometimes. 
Do you know that that's an act of meditation? You worry, you're thinking about that thing. So there is already a meditation happening. Why don't we start meditating on the Word of God? Pick one verse or two verses in the Bible and begin to meditate. See yourself. Use your image, like your, your imagination. Use it. Imagine. Like the burning bush, you read Moses is walking the burning bush. Imagine, oh my God, I am in there. Why burning bush? Why would God do a burning bush in, in a bush? Wouldn't he burn the whole place, in fact? You know what I mean? Like, you think, imagine, use your imagination. Think about it because you begin to see what God really is saying. Don't you think Moses would get burned? Lord, why would you? God, what's going on? You see what I'm saying? Use your imagination as you're meditating. And then by the help of the Holy Spirit, he will give you light. You will begin to, the question you're answering and the things you're imagining, the Holy Spirit will begin to say, yes, this is it. Oh, this is not it. He's that good. He guides, he directs, he instructs, he reveals. He's that good. Oh, he's that good. The Holy Spirit is that good. Let's go to the second of knowing God. The names of God. Who here has been named after something happened in your life? All of us. There is an event that happened in your, your life and they gave you a name. And that name was a message, right, isn't it? It revealed a message, a situation. For example, my parents named me Tako in my language. That means you're a poor man. You know what I did? I, 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 I went and laid down and cast that name out. Now, the names reveal something about who I am, isn't it? So, names of God in the Bible reveal who God is. That's why every time the people of Israel went somewhere, God will, they will put something, they will name something. And that, like for example, the children of Israel, they were in a situation and then God appeared and said, I am, the Lord, I am, your, I am your Rapha. What was he saying? I am the Lord who heals you, there is a revelation of who God is. So study the names of God. We need to study the names of God. The names of God reveal who really God is. Don't just, don't just think, oh, Jehovah El Shaddai, Jehovah Rapha, what is that name? Almighty, what is that name? What does that mean even? You know, don't just think it's just a casual, classy name that God has just been used in the Bible. They actually reveal who God is. God is faithful. You need to know God is faithful. That's a knowledge. His names reveal who God is. These are the keys of knowing God. Can we go to Timothy chapter 3, verse 15? I just want to go back to point one quickly. Look at this. Verse 15, he says, And that from a childhood you have known the what? The Holy Scripture. So this was from a childhood. From childhood they knew what? The Scriptures. So the Israelites began at the age of eight or seven years old to study the Bible. At the age of seven years old. He says, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. We need to begin at early stage right now. While you have the memory capacity to read your scripture. Verse thing, why it says all scripture is given by the inspiration of who? Of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And let's go to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 as well. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 in meditation point. He said this book of the Lord, which, which this Bible, this Bible that you're holding in your hand. He said, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it, what? Day and night. I know we are busy, but we can still meditate. You're in the car, you can think about a verse. You can think about a chapter. You can be in your lunchtime after work, and you can think about God, the knowledge of God. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your 
way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Oh, I love the Bible. You see the key? There is, there is good success in knowing God. There's good success. You will be prosperous and you will have good success. I think this is what everybody needs in life, isn't it? But if you do not know God, you cannot do exploit. You cannot do exploit. These great precious promises that has been given to us. The third of knowing God is Jesus, the person of Jesus. Can I tell you this? This is probably the misunderstood. Um, uh, Jesus came, let me put it this way, the person of Jesus. Jesus is the correction of who God is. Because for many years, before the New Testament, there was the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, God was seen like judgmental. God was seen like an angry man. God was seen like a, a monster. God was seen like a murderer. God was seen like this this guy who will just look at you and say, what are you doing here and die right now? The image of God was not a good image. People didn't really see God as he is. Because of our sin nature. Because of our wrong ways of doing things. So we, the image of God, the knowledge of God was not so clear to us. But Jesus came as the person that corrects what God is. Because when you hear God, people like begin to hide. People were hiding. Every time they sinned, people were ready to die anytime. Every time they saw the cloud getting dark, they said, thunder is coming. God is about to bring judgment. And many of us, like this, right now, many of us see God in a very, like God is uh, angry. God is mad. Every time you do something wrong, God is ready to just do something to you. We have a wrong concept about God. And so Jesus is the correction. Jesus is the correct theology of God. Jesus is the very study of who God is. And so Jesus came to correct. Hebrew chapter 1. Can we put that up? Hebrew chapter 1 verse 1. And this is what has been happening a lot in the churches. Many times in a lot of churches in the last five years. It says, God who at various times... And in various ways, he spoke in time past to the fathers by who? By the prophets. As has in this last day spoken to us by who? By his son, whom he has appointed as heir of all things. Through whom also he has made the, the world. Can you see that Jesus is the correction of knowing God? Many of us have wrong correction, uh, idea, concept about God. That's why we have like holiness movement. Last time I put a post on Facebook about something and someone posted it straight away. He said, that girl has too much makeup. Pastor, why do you leave her to be on the screen? Wrong concept about God. So you can see people have wrong concept about God. And this has killed many revivals because people think they know God. And then they become so judgmental. Because it's all in the fear of God. But they have a wrong fear of God. So Jesus, so if you want to know who God is, look at Jesus. Every time you don't know God well, know Jesus. Know about Jesus. That's why one time the, the disciples, they, they saw people doing something in the Old Testament, I mean in the New Testament, and then the disciples said, can we call fire from heaven? like Elijah did to those guys. And then Jesus said, you do not know what man of spirit you are from. So they had an idea. Every time somebody did something, we need to call fire from heaven and burn the people. They have a wrong concept about God. And Jesus corrected them and said, you do not know what man of spirit you are from. What am I saying? If we need to know God, look at Jesus. Jesus is the perfect theology, the perfect study about God. How we know God. And the last one. Experience. 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 Personal experience reveal to us who God is. Remember the story of Jacob we talked about here. So experience. 
Now imagine Moses seeing God in the burning bush. Don't you think he knows something about God out of that experience? So look at the experience that you have in life. Because every experience that every believer is having in life is revealing something about God. God is trying to reveal something to you about your experience. And then in that experience, you will know something about God if you're a believer. If you're like Job, you have, you, have, you have lost everything. But yet God was with you throughout the fire. You will know something about God. You will know something about God. So your experience in life revealed to you God. Some of you were supposed to die last year or something like that with an accident, but God intervened. God came through for you. That an experience that you will know something about God, that God is a defender. God is a deliverer of the righteous. Your experience reveal who God is. I heard of a story the other day, somebody, they, 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 two cars came, all right? Two cars came from, from one angle and hit the, the, the person from left and right. And, the, and then when they came out, they said they came out and scratch. And scratch. Now that experience, if they don't think there is God involved, there is something wrong with that. Your experience reveal God. We need to look at our experience. God is always revealing himself in our experience. If we tell Elijah right now, Elijah, you, God is not a consuming fire. He said, no, no, no. I experience it. I call fire from heaven. I know God is a consuming fire. You know, you see what I'm saying? Experience. Look at your experience in life. There are revelation of the knowledge of God. If you are, let me say like this. You see, Abraham, Abraham had no children, no nothing at all. He had only had cattle. He had only wealth. But a moment came in his life, like everybody, you can be successful, but there's something you still lack. You can have everything. You can be a billionaire, but there is something you still lack. Abraham had everything, but there is still something he lacked. He lacked children. So when you think as a person, oh, I have it all, I don't need God, there is something that you still lack. And so God came through for Abraham and said, Abraham, you be a father of nation. And when his wife gave birth, his experience revealed to him who God is. His experience revealed to him who God is. You see, experience revealed God in our life. And there was a time God was about to kill Sodom and Gomorrah. And he said, let me go to my friend and talk to him about my, my plans, my agenda. And that experience that he had with God, God talking to him, revealed to him something about God. For example, Jonah. Oh, we know Jonah. Jonah was sent by God to go deliver a message and to save the whole place. And then Jonah because he doesn't want to. He got caught up in the fish belly. He got thrown out out of a boat. And then from there, things were not working right for Jonah. <laughs> and at the end, <laughs> Jonah gave up. <laughs> Jonah gave up. Because his experience showed to him something about God. Jonah refused to do the task that God told him. The reason why Jonah refused, because Jonah understood something about God. He said, God, I know you. You are too loving. You are too merciful. You are too kind. If I go preach to these people, you're not going to follow your words. I know you're not going to kill them. When they repent, you will come and think, I want them to die. I want them to die, Jonah. Jonah said, I want them to die. I want them to die. Don't tell me this. Don't tell me this message. You're going to change your mind. The moment these people repent, you're going to change your mind. That's what... People think Jonah is a failure. Jonah is not a failure. Jonah is not running from God. Jonah just knew something about God, and he was running away from because he knows God will change his mind. Jonah was so angry. Jonah was like the, 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 some people here who said they want to see the judgment of God. Oh, we want God to kill everybody. Every homosexual should die today. 
Many people are like that. Many Christians are like that. They see lesbian, they say, ah, this lesbian needs to go to hell right now. This lesbian is going to go to hell. There's many Christians are like Jonah. They understand something about God. They like the fire, the angry side of God. But they don't understand the true nature of God. <laughs> so how do you know God? Your experience. Reveal Jonah experience and say, God, you're too merciful. You're too kind. Please just do what you want. Don't, don't tell me. I don't want this at all. I don't want this. I, I want them to all just die today. Watch your experience. Some of you, God pulled you through fires. Some of you were supposed to die many years ago. Some of you, you had bad reports from your family like me. You know, I was supposed to die many years ago when I was young. I had ammonia. I, only had to, I was just living on, on, on uh, injection every day. I was taken to a witchcraft, and the witchcraft had to cut me up on the side here to cure me of my ammonia. I was meant to die. I was meant to die. But my experience reveals something to me about God today. Some of you is the same. Some of you, you had witchcraft written over all over your life. Somebody was supposed to take your life. You had curses, but God intervened. It's your experience reveals something about God. So watch out, Abraham, come. Watch out for your experience. So let me put it this way practically again. I want you to do these things practically, five things. Number one, study, read, and memorize the scripture. Do that. Number two, constantly meditate on the scripture. Number three, engage in any spiritual activity such as prayer, fasting, and worship. Because as you are fasting, you are worshiping, and you are praying, you are engaging in spiritual event that will begin to reveal also something about God. But when you're not engaging in prayer, in, in worship, and fasting, it will not open you up for something to know about God. Number four, Pay attention to your life experiences. There are messages about who God is. When you are living depressed, oppressed, there's something you do not know about God. If you're living in affliction all the time, there's something you do not know about God. Pay attention to your experiences. If you're always getting demon oppressed, there's something you do not know about God. If you're always under fear, there's something you do not know about God. If you're still always lying and gossiping, there's something you do not know about God. Because if you knew something about God, that should change. It should totally change. Number five, speak what you know about God. What you do not know, don't say it. Oh, many people just say things they do not know. They can't defend it at all. Oh, they say, I know something about God. Some, somewhere in the Bible, somewhere. Oh, I heard it. But they do not know really. Speak what you know. Because when you speak what you know, it's because you know something about God. If you only know about God as love, keep talking about love for the rest of your life. Don't go further than that. Because your speaking attracts challenges. That wants to prove if you know God. Are you ready for that? Let's all stand up together. I have made up my mind. Have you made up your mind?